Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thanks again for joining us on these pandemic projects. And this is actually part two of a let's take an old reel and make it new uh, projects that were sent in by Nick. And Nick is a reel collector uh, in New York. And Nick has uh, sent me a bunch of parts for a, um, a 155 uh, Penn Beachmaster. So we're going to take these all apart. And we're going to assemble one as if we, I guess we were on the assembly line. So I think what happened here is Nick, I believe, has had these re-chromed. Uh, or they may be new. I'm not sure. They look like they're re-chromed based on the, the back ends of these. But these are beautiful pieces and parts that have been restored. And uh, we are going to take all the pieces that he gave me and we'll put the reel together. So if you find yourself in a position where your reel is... Um, apart and you don't know how to put it back together again, or if you just uh, want to play along with the jigsaw puzzle here uh, and see how this all comes together, we can certainly do it that way as well. So let's uh, let's get started then. I'm just checking out the pieces and parts as they come in. This one we're not going to be able to do. I, I know this already. Uh, he had asked to replace this uh, click, which is actually in pretty good condition uh, with this one, but this one doesn't have a clip on it. This one gets peened and I don't have a way to peen that, so uh, that one is unfortunately going to have to stay as it is uh, to, uh, as part of this restoration. So right, what we're doing right now is just taking care of the pieces and parts. That's your, your real stand. There's a whole bag of goodies here. Just checking the pieces in here, seeing what we got. And an empty envelope. That might be the, oh, there's a screw here, that's quite possibly what that is. And then we have a host, host of internal parts. This is kind of like a reel in a bag project. There's the eccentric. Let's see what this is. Always interesting. So I always recommend, this is the handle, I always recommend that if you're uh, doing one of these things, go get the schematic. Now I kind of know the schematic to this one in my mind, but don't be afraid to go out. If you need a pen reel schematic, they're available on uh, mysticparts.com, and uh, you would simply look under conventional reels for the Beachmaster series, and you would be able to find the schematic for the 155 as well as the, the 160, and uh, those essentially are the same mechanically, but just a different... Uh, um, set of um, uh, spool sizes. Okay. So generally what I like to do is start with the frame first. We did this on the other one. Uh, we have a couple of side plates. We have the posts. We have the screws new in the bag. I'm just going to, at the risk of craziness, just kind of dump the internal parts in there. I trust we will find what we need over time. Nick's pretty good about that. Uh, we have a side plate here that uh, we can install that click on before we put the posts in. And I just need to find the little side plate screw then. We have that click in there, just the back part of the screw. And we're looking for the piece that comes through. So play along with me. It's not always easy, but it is usually right. There's a little cap nut that goes here. And then there's the screw that goes on this side, and that'll tighten down your click ring. So some of these click rings can be replaced, some can't. You have to have a side plate where you can do that. All right, and then we want to just match which side plate is which. So 
sometimes they are identical and sometimes there's an offset difference on the real stand. Well, this one's fitting. The side plate from the other side. This one does not need to be left when you when you install the bridge, so we can put this one on as well. And I like to put the frame pieces on first. Just gets parts out of the way. And that makes it easier all around. Okay, let's put that real stand on first. The short screws and long screws. Let's see what he gave us in the bag here. Lots of stuff. I'll just get the empties off my, my desk for a moment here. Have a whole bunch of screws in the bags. I saw the two real stand screws, but here's two more. So that may be the other side. But I did put one of them in here to loosen the, in the box. Let's see if these are the right ones. They should be. Yeah, you know your real stand screw because it comes out. Uh, short. So let's start with that one. Those stands are always kind of a balancing act to get the first one done and then after that it's pretty easy. Let's do that balancing act here, see if we can't get that screw started. Kind of got lucky that time. And these were re-chromed and I noticed this with the 4 hours well that uh, I guess when they re chrome there's a slight plating inside the the threads that are locking this down, and uh, as a result, you uh, have to tighten it a little bit more, but not terribly. And I'm working on the non gear side plate because you can't attach the gear side plate and have the rest of this done properly. Now we can grab those side posts. Let's find the side post screws. And leave those here. These look like the, the side plate screws. Two, three, four. They, they all call for the same one then. There's eight, which is what I need. I need four right now, so let's go ahead and take the four out. Three. Let's grab one more. I'm just going to lock this back up for a moment. So Nick has got quite a collection of these uh, older pen reels. They're all in beautiful condition, and uh, he uh, has sent me quite a few of these to replace parts and to uh, bring them up to speed. I'm not quite sure if he ever fishes these. Uh, that's, of course, totally at his discretion to do that. Or if these are shelf sitters, I'll have to talk to him one day about that. But for now, uh, I'm putting a drop of oil in here just so it doesn't seize if it does come to salt water. And also kind of as a general lubricant to uh, kind of hold on. And as you can see, I'm sort of threading it by hand here. These beach masses were around a long time. And uh, I can remember buying later versions of these in the 19, early 1980s. That's about when the run stopped. But I think these were one of the first ones to come out. And I'm gonna... Okay, so I stopped the, the camera to install the rest of these. I figured you didn't need to see me uh, tightening every post down, but that's all I've done in the interim. Now I'm looking for the back bearing. this one and I saw a spring over here so we'll put a little drop of oil into your bearing here put the spring on we're going to attach that to the case now that's your spool adjuster and bearing and hand tighten these don't use a wrench or pliers or anything all right, and then we can uh, grab the spool. We can nest the spool into this reel here. 
We can just let all of this sit on the side for a moment as we turn our attention to the other side plate. So the first thing I want then is the side plate bearing on this side. Let's check that package set again. Okay, so same thing with the side plate uh, or the gear side bearing. A little drop of oil into that. And that goes to the side plate. Hand tighten this as much as you can. And then actually the pen wrench that comes with the reel fits this bearing. So go ahead and snug it down tight. And then uh, next up then would be the eccentric. So we're going to take that out. And again, you may have all of these in a parts tray. You may have all of these in, around your uh, workbench. However, you may be installing this. And I just uh, I appreciate your patience as uh, I kind of pull these out of the bags and the like. But we'll show you how to do this one next. This is a question that happens quite a bit in terms of how do I install that. So this has got a left side spring. There's a notch here. The flat side of the free spool or eccentric spring is going to go there. The bottom tab of it is going to go in the hole on the eccentric, just like that. You're going to invert the piece, place the tab into that V and the eccentric into the slot. And we just lost the piece. If you lose it a lot, put a little bit of grease on there. Usually the the uh, hole is enough to hold that, but every now and then it doesn't. So just put a little grease in there. That'll hold that tight. And come on over and nest one piece into that side. And get the free spool eccentric here. Then you want to grab this and pull until you find a balance. So invert that. You obviously can't turn it around with the knob there. Invert that. And then just rotate it till you find the balance, which is usually about halfway. Once you find it halfway, you're able to push the back in because you clear that little ramp. Oh, we pulled it the wrong way, but that's okay. We've cleared the ramp. Find that balance again. Then invert your free spool arm so that the travel knob is to the right of that. And then we need that little screw. So that's probably in the bag that Nick has supplied. So let's go back and check our parts bags here. Here we go. He's usually pretty good about getting all the parts to me, so uh, I probably would have done well considering the video to lay them all out ahead of time, but I kind of trust what he's done and I pretty much assume it's going to be there and if I can keep all the bags together, probably makes for lousy videos, but uh, it's a part a way of organizing for me. All right, so when you have that to the halfway point, tighten that uh, eccentric screw down. Make sure it works, flipping it back and forth. So that's what we did. We nestled the, the flat part of the arm in the V. We inserted the eccentric in. That was offset. It wasn't able to clear. So we, we turned the free spool release upside down. Used the lever to where we got a balance point in the middle. Pushed the eccentric in. And then we tightened down the screw so that uh, we held that. And now we have an operating Eccentric. Before I go too much further, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that eccentric so I don't forget it later. Okay, it's time to rebuild the bridge then. So here's a brandy new bridge. If this wasn't new, I would knock the pin out of this, pull the gear sleeve off, clean it, and then re-grease it. But you can see this is new and turning freely. That's not needed here. So what is needed then is the set of drag washers and the, uh, the backing washers. So here they are. We're going to take the first one, which is a solid hard fabric washer. Sometimes you'll see it in red. This one is black. doesn't matter. It's a, uh, it's a washer that's going to keep your anti-reverse dog from banging up against the main gear. And that's a hard plastic. 
Okay, then we should have three of the 155 HT100 style bags. If you're on, if you have an older set of these, they're going to be leather, uh, and leather's still okay. You can use it so long as they remain flexible. If they're not flexible, they need to be replaced, and I would recommend replacing them with these, the HT100s. Okay, this is, I'm assuming, new. It looks new. Well, now it's been cleaned nicely, but it's not new. You can see some minor pitting in the back here. We're going to check the teeth to make sure that they're okay. I'm going to put some grease on this main gear here so that it operates smoothly. You don't have to get it in every every tooth, but uh, get them on enough that it'll spread itself as it uh, works its way around. Then we can install that over the, the gear shaft. Now I'm going to use Cal's Universal Drag Grease for the washers. We're going to put a dab on there, and I'm going to use my gloved hand as a tool to spread that around. And we'll wipe off any excess. The idea with the, the drag grease is to keep these drag washers flexible. It does uh, prolong life. It doesn't do anything in terms of um, increasing max drag or anything. That's the first of the washers. That's what's known as a keyed washer. It's got two flat sides on it. And there's two of those, and there's one eared washer. The two keyed washers go top and bottom, and the eared washer goes in the middle on a, a three-drag uh, set. The eared washer has a circle in the center and two points that stick out. Those points lodge in the main gear. I think we got that set, but we're just going to make sure. We're going to just press down to make sure that those ears are in. They are. And you can see that the gear is in the, the washer is inside the gear and it there's two slots where that goes. If you don't get those in the slot, you're not going to have drag performance. Last of the greased drag washers then, we have the second of the keyed washers which has the flat side and we have the cap washer. So that's how your main gear assembly works. We'll come back here and now we'll do the yoke. We're going to grease the yoke now. We don't need the dry grease any longer. We're going to grease the yoke, both sides. Looks like a new spool gear or pinion gear. Same thing we did with the main gear. You can get grease on this so it operates nice and smooth. Insert the yoke into the slot. And when you're installing your spool gear, the notched side faces the spool and the flat side faces backwards. If you do it opposite, the reel will work, but you won't, uh, won't turn the spool. All right, next up then are the two springs for the yoke. If you've already put oil into your bearing in the back there, you could put grease. New ones, I'll just put the oil in. You're going to press down on the yoke, take the jack, set your eccentric to the off position, and just swing the jack over that, and that's how you set your, your yoke and jack combination. Next step then would be to insert the main gear and bridge. You're going to push down on the assembly, and insert your spool assembly and then rotate your bridge halfway. Now this one's got a flat spring. You're going to have to come over here to his part spin again. I'm looking for the bridge screws, which are the, there's two types. This is clearly where I would have benefited from putting them out ahead of time. He's got a bunch of these, but I only need two. These are fully threaded bridge screws. They go on the bottom. Now we have a dog. That's the anti-reverse dog. And in this case we have the flat spring. So the flat spring is going to nest. It's going to ride on top of the anti-reverse dog, around the post, and wrap into the side plate as a retainer. It kind of goes like that. You might Hopefully you can see that on here. 
that's laying on top of the dog wraps around the post, rests inside on that uh, sidewall there. Then you can rotate your bridge until the hole lines up with the screw and put a couple of turns on the screw, but don't turn it completely in. Something like that. All right, now I'm going to put the second bridge screw. I usually go opposites up top, but I don't have the bag open. So before I release this, I'm just going to use the other threaded screw, which belongs on the bottom on the other side, to hold that assembly. And now with the assembly held, I'm going to come back and get the partially threaded bridge screws. And I need two of those. He's got more, but I only need two. And those go in the top holes, and they're only partially threaded because they run through those springs that we put there. And with the partially thread, you won't snag the, the springs. All right, last one goes on the other side here. And once I have them all set, we'll come back and, and tighten them. I can tighten this one down, and then I go in the X pattern. I go down, come back up here, and then come back to the other side, making sure that they're all tight. Okay, I'll give it a spin. You hear a nice strong click there. The last piece I want to lube before I close this wheel up is the front side of the jack there, which is going to slide under the bridge. Just make sure that it's operating properly, which it is. I like to leave it in the off position when I go to reinstall there. Okay, we can take this then and, and mount to the side plate. Let's go ahead and get those screws out of the way before I start uh, putting them in. So I'm just going to repackage these bridge screws for him them out of the way. And then I have a couple of empty bags here. These are the side plate screws, so let's go ahead and grab these. Oh, actually these are the side plate screws. Yeah, I just got two bags of them. So there's four side plate screws and then there's two that I have from the other one. That are the uh, smaller ones, and then we'll uh, grab our grease kit, put some grease onto the spool shaft, take our assembly and insert it, and we want to line up, and we can start with a screw on one of the cross posts. And again, I don't tighten these all the way down. I just get them started until I know I have good balance with these. And these do have a little bit of a, a, a runoff from the re-chroming, where the, um, I, I think they've got some of it inside the threads on the cross posts, so it's a, you know, just a little bit harder to turn than it normally would be. alignment on that side plate. So I'm going to use my pick just to bring it up a little bit. Now let's try this again then. Oh, out the two. Don't force anything. If you find yourself with something that's sticking, then uh, it's time to stop. Take a look and see what's sticking. And come on back in and adjust Adjust an address. Okay, there we go. We got this one started. It's always the one that's the tough one. So as I was saying, I know that this reel was around in the 1980s, but I believe this was first introduced in the 1950s, probably around 1955 or so. You can tell the older ones. Now this one side plate on this one is an older one because it has that flat spring and the flat spring was replaced by a coil spring in 1957 or 59. I'm not, don't hold me to the dates, but that's when they changed over to flat spring technology. 
The earlier ones had etched side plates. This one does not have an etched side plate. So um, the earlier ones, I think, could have been as early as the 40s. So Penn introduced their line of reels starting in the 1940s. And um, they stayed with them for quite some time, which is why they became as popular as they did. They were dependable. They uh, were well designed, well engineered. And you can see we're working on a reel 70 years later. If this was the 1950s, uh, 70 years later, we're working on this reel which is uh, interesting in and of itself, so kind of a testament to the, uh, the strength of these wheels. Okay, so we're all installed now with the, the rings, it's a nice looking reel, a nice spin to that uh, spool, everything is nice and clean. Time to put the gear sleeve spacer or furrow on. Next up then is the star adjuster. Now there's a number on the back here, 10-60, that goes on the bottom. That's the part number. And then you can install. Make sure it's threaded properly. If you uh, I think we're in it. If you need to grab it, grab it with the handle. turning to it. Let's install the handle then. And the handle screw. And we've already pretty much tested it, but we'll give it a test drive in just a second. So that's how you do it. That's how you build one from parts. Again, I didn't uh, pull the schematic because I kind of have that schematic pretty much known by rope right now, but uh, you need to follow along the directions, follow that uh, schematic. If you took this reel apart, hopefully you took it apart by taking pictures uh, along the way. And if you're stuck, and that's why you're watching this video right now, well then uh, we kind of showed you how to do this uh, piece by piece. So we started by building the frame out, installing that little click uh, mechanism. A nice loud click now. Uh, then we built out the frame by installing the reel seat and the crossbars, oiled the bearing and put the spool in, built the back side of that by installing the bearing and uh, oiling that. Then we completed the yoke and jack assemblies to that. And then we installed the bridge after loading the, the uh, bridge up with the main gear and the drag washers. And now uh, we just finished that by putting in the sleeve the spool adjuster, handle, and screws, and there you go. Here's a beautiful looking example of a 155 Penn Beachmaster. So before I finish, I want to thank the first responders and the essential personnel who are working every day to help keep us safe during the pandemic. I would be remiss if I didn't do that. And I also uh, want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments on this reel or any reel in particular, leave them in the comments section and I try to respond to all of those. It's getting more difficult, but I keep trying to do it. And uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have a reel that needs to be worked on and you're not capable of working on that reel or have no desire to, then uh, shoot me an email with the contact information on the back of this video and I'll be happy to uh, let you know about the reel repair services as well. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.